let me go ahead and start. I've got uh, people pretty much in alphabetical order, except for me. I split mine. Um, so I, I'm the beginning and the end. Uh, and the beginning I want to show you is this particular photo on here. And it's uh, from the Benson Sculpture Gardens in Loveland, Colorado. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that particular site a little bit later has on. Anybody, has anybody else seen that? I have. No. You, I you, could take, you could take days almost seeing everything that's there. It's all open in a beautiful, nice green lawn that you see in front of you there. I'll shut up now. It's your turn, Robert, uh, Jonathan. <laughs> it's, uh, I agree. It's a very beautiful place. And, and uh, you could spend, we, we didn't get all the way through. What are those animals? Are they coyotes? Or... I think they're wolves. They're wolves? Okay. Yeah, the, the exhibit, that particular sculpture is called Survival. Oh, okay. And uh, what's, what's kind of fun is you can actually uh, Google Benson Sculpture Gardens, Loveland. And uh, from that page, from that, if you, you know, when you find their, their homepage, they have literally photos and, um, and the titles of all the sculptures that are uh, throughout the whole garden. Wow. So, okay, so. Then I, from there, I wanted to go and just talk about a place probably most of you have been, which is Custer State Park. And um, we took a bus tour through there, and then we've driven through there a couple of times. And each time, to me, uh, one of the, the most exciting things is uh, getting close up close to the buffalo. Um, so I wanted to give you a sense of what that that feels like from the inside of a car. Excuse me for this not being a photo, but I thought you'd let me slip it in anyhow. <laughs> and uh, about the time that these critters started moving up towards our car, uh, my wife was panicking and uh, <laughs> I just said, don't worry, no harm will come from it to us, we're okay. And then we talked to the park ranger, ranger later in the day and she was telling us that the day or the week before somebody in a little Volkswagen had aggravated them and the uh, one of the big ones came and just went through the rear window just simply oh. stepped up on top of the, the Volkswagen and broke through the, the window so <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we were safe yeah. we had no problems did the buffalo have liability uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they had liability. I don't know if you saw it in the sec for a second there when it showed in the rearview mirror, the car behind us, the guy, if you can see it there, he's sitting up on yeah. top of his, his SUV. Oh, no. Photographing these folks. So, anyhow, uh, we, we love Custer State Park. And uh, so I'll let it, let it set at that. So, Debbie, your turn. Okay. Um, so my late brother-in-law uh, was the CEO of the, an insurance company. It was his dad's insurance company. And they would have these incentive trips every year and a half. And they, they started to invite me in 1998. And uh, we started our trip in Berlin, although I don't have any Berlin images on here. But we, went, we took the train from Berlin down to Prague. And so this is... Uh, Prague, the city of a hundred spires. Um, it, I thought it was kind of, it would, it would be a good town to do black and white photography and although it is, it is colorful, but this is, this is from one of the, uh, uh, on Charles Bridge, there are, um, on either, either side of the river, there are these towers that you can go up into. So this is, this is the top rooftops and fires of, of Prague. Um, a really a, a beautiful, beautiful city. It was found in the seventh century. Uh, and it's known for its well-preserved castles, Baroque and uh, Gothic cathedrals and lovely and a lovely art scene. Um, 
there's a lot of uh, Art Nouveau or ornamentation on a lot of the buildings, which was kind of peculiar to me and that that was, you know, that was a 20th century, uh, early 20th century addition, but a lot of interesting doors and like I said, the ornamentation. And, um, it was really, it was really stunning. Yeah, you can, you can move on. Oh, yes. So, yeah, everybody has seen this one. And I didn't capture the whole thing because there were tourists below that. And I think on the hour, it's an astronomical clock. It originated in the 15th century, world oldest astro astronomical clock. It's that's still operating. Um, and I guess maybe it's on the hour, but all 12 apostles come out and do their thing. They're, they're, um, the, the, the forests were pretty annoying. They were buying these things. And I think that these, these animals that make no ways that maybe were part of uh, Mozart, San Giovanni. Um, but it was it's, uh, it's in the old town, quite lovely. If you go, I would recommend not wearing um, stiletto shoes. Uh, <laughs> don't, Helen, don't wear your stilettos. The, the, the walkways, the, the bricks are, uh, there's a lot of space in between them. And I can see where one would, uh, could easily, easily trip. I just but, watched, I just wrote that warning down on a note. Pad. You, <laughs> yeah. Would, would you um, CC it to me, Dick? <laughs> yeah, you bet. So it hadn't been, in, in uh, 1989, they, they had the Velvet Revolution revolution and so they were, had not been out of uh, under communism for that long and uh, when we were there in 98 and people still talked about that and we're still some of them not we're not all that happy to not be in the under the, the communist I, mean, they have to, it, I guess they were cared for in different ways uh, now they were on their own hmm. you can move on so this is the Charles Bridge, and um, the, the so there's no it's just foot traffic only, and um, but there's the there are statues. I think there's thirty, yeah, thirty uh, Baroque style sculptures of the saints um, on the bridge, and um, it was it was really beautiful to to see. Uh, it, you can see in the background. Uh, the outcropping of the that's that's Prague Castle, the Prague Castle that Kafka wrote of, and it's um, it is uh, a, a, a largest ancient castle complex, largest ain't yeah. There's all sorts of things within the the um, the boundaries of the the castle. We did some touring and. Uh, the cathedral there, we went into in the cathedral, uh, uh, Alphonse Muka, who is actually from Moravia, but when it was Czechoslovakia, it, it was it was Prague and um, Moravia, Czech Republic and Moravia, made up Czech, the Czech, Czechoslovakia. And then after the, the, after they split up, then, um, you know, they were, they were two different countries. And there's pretty good timing on uh, the statue in the middle. And do I not see Jesus on the cross? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it was pretty stunning. Um, these these trips, luckily, were were scheduled every year and a half, and so uh, it just so happened that several of them have been were on my birthday. One of the uh, events was to take a, a ride on this boat that, that goes up and down. That's the Voltava River. And so my brother-in-law arranged, so, we, so we, we meet up on the boat for this event and he has a birthday cake for me. And three, 400 people on the boat are singing happy birthday to me. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody is looking at me and <clears throat> it was, uh, it, uh, you know, it was fun, a little bit embarrassing, but fun. In English? 
Yeah, Indians. Well, we were with a group that that probably probably comprised most of the boat. You know, it, it was several hundred people. These people had sold uh, annuities, and if they had their quota, they would be allowed to go on these these um, trips. So, and the 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 guy that was a uh, driving the boat though you could look inside from where we were standing and he had a beer so you could you, <laughs> it was pretty loose i don't know if it still is that way but and they love their beer um i think but the, the original budweiser name was used in uh the czech republic and somehow budweiser had to you know work it out the the american budweiser company had to work it out with uh with the folks, but you know, we went to a, um, a, a, a um, tab, not a tavern, but a brewery maybe, and it was like 400 years old. We just, it was just hard to fathom these buildings and uh, it had been around for you know 800 years. And um, there was a, a Jewish, uh, Jewish ghetto, they called it something different than that. In the descriptions, Jewish quarter, but um, so you can walk through the the cemetery there, and uh, they had just because they, they were so confined to that area that the graves were um, one on top of the other, so it just looked really lumpy, and the the grave the stones were sort of leaning off to the side, and it was uh, wow. it was a, a moving experience to to uh, see that. They had a, a a building that that um, with a lot of memorabilia and, and whatnot, but they had all the names of the of the the the, the Jews that had been sent to the Terrazan Terrazan um, camp, and from there they went to Auschwitz. But uh, Mel uh, Madeline Albright found her family family's name uh, on the the wall there. About the time we were there. Okay. Uh, if you, Debbie, if you've ever seen the movie Yentl, Barbara Streisand is singing, Papa, can you hear me? Papa, right in the middle of Charles Bridge. Oh, I'll have to watch that again. Yeah. Um, thanks for, yeah, that, that's, uh, there were a lot of movies that were filmed in, uh, in Prague. This is Karlovy Berry. It's about uh, it's 81 miles from um, from Prague, and it's a spa town. So they have all of these hot springs, and um, uh, you know, people would come and visit and take the waters. And we had lunch there. Uh, we're, we were having lunch when I think probably I, I took that picture, but it was just a uh, um, river that flowed through there, but it was uh, really a picturesque town with a lot of these old buildings and driving through the town and we got down to the, by the bottom of the hill and kind of looked into a courtyard and these people were all dancing, like maybe waltzing or could have been the polka, I don't know, but it was just sort of a, a lovely sight. But we walked around and had lunch and tested some of the water, it was, you know, a lot, probably a lot of minerals was not all that. It was uh, not not that tasty. Okay, you can move on. Yeah, so this is still Carlo Bivari. It's my sister and myself uh, just sitting there along the wall. And it was along the, the colony where they had uh, the water, where they had the... Uh, the dispensers and they were just these bowls kind of in the ground or in the, the concrete and the water would just flow. And you could, I think we did test it. But yeah, yeah it was picturesque. It was lovely. It was a lovely day. It was in September. Okay. And uh, this is again, Carlo Vivera and uh, the, this building, the green building, is uh, it says Mozart on it. So Mozart had stayed there as well as Goethe and um, yeah, uh, Beethoven had spent the, spent time there. Chopin, 
um, you know, a lot of people came to 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 uh, recoup and take the waters. But it was, uh, you know, driving through the countryside, you see a lot of the, you see hops growing, something I'd never seen before. So it was interesting. Okay, <clears throat> there are plenty of other pictures, but these are the ones that. Uh, been there. Hi, all. My wife doesn't know that I'm doing the Zoom. She just walked in. So enjoy. Uh -huh. We we joined uh, the Airstream Club right after I retired, and and they have uh, these caravans uh, a month or two months long that are organized by not professionals, but they are uh, people who who really are expert in the area, and so. Uh, we quickly uh, jumped on a chance to, to spend a month in Kentucky. And the caravan is called Springtime in Kentucky. It was exactly this time of year, uh, Kentucky Derby season and, and so forth. So, so off we went to, uh, to Kentucky. It was a six stops in, in Kentucky, uh, crisscrossing the state. Uh, we started uh, and our rendezvous was in Bowling Green where the Corvette Museum is the Corvette Museum and the Corvette Factory, which uh, is a remarkable stop. And for a car guy, this is the Mecca uh, for automobiles. This is a 1960 uh, Corvette, the one that I first learned about. If you have not seen the 2021 Corvette, it will make your knees weak. It is one of the most magnificent cars ever produced in the United States or in the world. It's just, and while we were there at the, Cor at the Corvette factory, not the museum, but at the Corvette factory, which is across the street, they told us that they were going to introduce this new, uh, this new mid car, uh, mid engine car, like, like a Ferrari. And this is the year that it, it has been introduced. So pretty exciting. Uh, off we went from Bowling Green to Louisville. Uh, next slide, please, Jonathan. And uh, we spent uh, most of a week in Louisville um, and associated with the, the Derby. Um, and, um, and so it, there's going to be, you know, it's first Saturday uh, in May. So that will be uh, May 1st this year. And um, it, it's an exciting thing, it's a national spectacle. Uh, we had a chance to, to be there. The ladies wore their hats and we had a hat parade. It was, uh, it was great to see this. I have to say that Kentucky is the most controversial place I think I have ever been. Everywhere, every stop that we made was a jaw-dropping controversy. And, and so uh, you can't get to the Derby without realizing what a violent and, and dangerous uh, sport it is. And uh, so I, I have to say that uh, I'll, I'll keep watching it. I always love it. I, I drank some really dreadful mint juleps there. They <laughs> arranged a, uh, a tasting for us by Buffalo Trace Distillery, and which I like. I like Buffalo Trace bourbon. It's good. But these kids that they had out there were just making some terrible mint juleps. I came back to Kansas City and I said, I'm going to work on this. So I did. Uh, Great personal sacrifice. I have done a lot of tastings of mint juleps, <laughs> and I, I, and I, I have it down pretty well. I'll put some notes on our Facebook page uh, for for you to enjoy. Uh, and here I brought a little sample of uh, my Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Uh, next slide, please. We went on to, which I believe is the nation's most beautiful state capital. If you haven't been to Frankfurt to see the Kentucky State Capitol, it is worth a journey. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there are a lot of controversies surrounding this, of course, and the governor's mansion is maybe the biggest controversy for me. Well, no, well, no, not as far as uh, Frankfurt goes. The biggest controversy for me was the fact that Daniel Boone is buried there when he should very well have remained interred in Missouri, of course, but they stole him. But anyway, back to the governor's mansion, you remember um, Phyllis George, 
first lady of Kentucky uh, from 79 to 83, married to John Y. Brown, Phyllis George, Miss America, uh, a famed uh, announcer. And um, so Phyllis um, saw that the governor's mansion had been condemned. It couldn't, it couldn't even be lived in. It was so decrepit. It had been, it was so run down. So over the course of her years uh, in, in the Capitol and, and her husband's, he was just a one-term governor, by the way. Um, she rebuilt the, she rebuilt the um, governor's mansion into a palace-like Versailles. It is, it is so, well, how could I describe it? So ostentatious, so over the top, so French Renaissance. And you'll wonder, what does this have to do with Kentucky? <laughs> and yet it's gorgeous. I gotta say, it's fabulous. The grounds around the capital are just amazing. Frankfurt is some kind of national um, jewel, I would say. And then we went on uh, to our uh, next stops. We're outside the capital area. In, that's in, it. That's in, it. That's what you were talking region. about. What's that? What did you say? I said that's what you've been talking about right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is Versailles. So there are 120 counties in Kentucky. 50 of them are in Appalachia. If you look at a map of the Appalachian poverty, which is assessed every year, you will see that the red is the most impoverished part of Appalachia is in Kentucky. It is poverty like we don't see on a large scale. We see poverty in pockets, concentrated pockets of poverty here in Missouri, but, but, not, but not a half a state. And that's what this area is. It, it, it's coal mine country. And we, I was traveling with a, a, a professor from uh, uh, University of Montana uh, who teaches geology. So he was an interesting guy to have along as we, as we toured through Appalachia. He always uh, commenting, shaking his head over the destruction that the coal mining has caused in that state. We'll never will never recover. The place is just absolutely so controversial. And, and here we are in Butcher Hollow, uh, Loretta Lynn and her sister, Crystal Gale's uh, home, home and where they were raised. It is the most dog patch, most impoverished cabin you've ever seen. It's, it's, and it's, it's still original, <laughs> just unbelievable how a family of a lot of kids lived in, in, in this area. But while we're in the area, of course, we, we were experiencing all kinds of the wonderful culture of Appalachia, the music, um, the beautiful, um, lush greenery, the, the area is, is really very nice. Then, then we, as we came back, that's out on the, in the easternmost part of the, of the state, uh, right on up against the uh, West Virginia border. So then we came back, as we came back in the caravan disbanded, we got to Boreal, uh, where the, the college is, uh, world famous uh, college, uh, where the students attend with no, they don't pay any tu tuition. It's free to go to Boreal College. It's, it's uh, model like uh, our School of the Ozarks, where the students work study work study on steroids, they call it. So yeah, John, we, my my niece went to Berea. Berea, yes, you you, you yeah, my niece from Minnesota went to Berea for two years. Yeah, they, their acceptance rate is um, it, it's it's a exclusive school. They they don't accept a student uh, who's not ready, uh, and so. Um, it's it's you a great be, honor to, to go in a great school. Don't you have to be a poverty line though. Your income has to be pretty low to go there, and the, and the, they they make a lot of mountain crafts. 
I lived in Lexington. That's kind of like my second home. In yes. Lexington. But, yeah, so the I've, crafts that were are really great, and that's what we were we were there for. I was uh, shopping and and touring. I was interested in the school, uh, uh, but you know, my wife and most of the other people were interested in the crafts because they, they do wonderful work, weaving and pottery and and everything. Great. John had had a question about this picture. Is the uh, perhaps the owner or resident of that house looking at you from that upper window? <laughs> uh, there's there's something up there, isn't there? There's kids or like something. Yeah, I think maybe kids because it, it's just a constant parade of people through through this uh, butcher hall. Holler, it's holler, holler, John, not hollow. Butcher yeah. holler. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, the reason I was so uh, interested in going to Kentucky was because of uh, also when I retired uh, 10 years ago, exactly, 11 years ago, exactly, I, uh, I, got, I gave myself Ancestry.com and I've been working on our family history now for 11 years, uh, seriously uh, working on it. And, um, and so I have deep, deep uh, family roots in Kentucky. My, uh, my family, my, my paternal family has been here. Uh, since um, the colonial, earlier colonial days, uh, and they moved uh, across from the colonies. Honey, honey, please. They moved across from the from the colonies to the um, on into Kentucky, and and, and came on in, in the Missouri uh, in uh, uh, late early, very early twentieth century. My point is that my one of my great grandfathers was the minister that performed the marriage ceremony between Abraham Lincoln's father and mother. Uh, Barack Obama had nothing uh, to compare to Abraham Lincoln about a, uh, a birthright. Uh, and um, it, it was, they could not find a marriage certificate between uh, Abraham Lincoln's father and mother. He was uh, he was claimed to, you know, have been illegitimate, and they didn't know where he was born and who was his father, and so forth. Well, my one of my great grandfathers was the guy, guy who who had the certificate that he where he had married the the, the couple, the Lincolns, uh, in Kentucky, and um, so that that sort of saved the day. And I think that uh, Lincoln's political career was able to to advance because they found this minister's uh, birth certificate, a uh, 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 marriage certificate for Lincoln's parents. Okay, enough said. I wanna say that, I, I, that Kentucky is a, a gorgeous place. Um, and I'm so, I was so glad to have gotten there and I, will, I won't go back because of all the controversial stuff. <laughs> How can I, I, I'm going to try to get by without talking about their politicians or their politics or their Kentucky colonels and all the other controversies or their basketball team. I can't stand this state. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it was beautiful to see. Oh, I love Kentucky. <laughs> okay, well. This uh, past year has not been a great travel year for us, but we did recently venture out, that is Catherine and I, and we found a little gem that I probably have heard of before, but we'd never been to in the 25 years or so that we've lived here. And it's the, uh, the uh, Kaufman Memorial Gardens uh, downtown. Um, so, it's probably, we, we went about a week ago and it's probably a little bit early to go. They're still kind of getting things up and running. Of course, um, Mother Nature has to bring things along too. But it is a gorgeous, peaceful place. So um, I, I wanted you to see the texture of this flower. So I turned it black and white. But if, if you go on to the next one, Jonathan, um, and I'm sure, yeah, there it is. This, oh, yes. yeah, I, I, again, I don't know how many of you have been there, but I sat there and I was thinking to myself, boy, we should have gone two or three times every summer for the past 20 years. It, it's just a wonderful, beautiful place. In the distance, you can see the 
two side buildings that are flanking either side of the pool. There's more greenery beyond that. And the large building, tall building on the left, appears to be their tropical growing house. They had it kind of shut down the day we were there. Uh, but you can see the, the large expanse of plantings that haven't yet bloomed. And like I say, this is just maybe 10 days ago or less. Um, so by June, uh, I'm definitely going back. This is just a wonderful, beautiful place. Um, there's probably a couple more images of flowers, as I recall, uh, Jonathan. Oh, actually, when you walk in at uh, the entrance, um, they have these uh, flanking of trees, and they had just started to sprout, but I suspect because there wasn't a lot of color otherwise, they had hung all of these little tassels, <laughs> um, almost like a graduate's tassel, um, all up and down this the length of this uh, walkway. Just beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, next. I'm sure this is nothing new that you haven't seen in your own gardens, but uh, but I'm amazed at the structures every time I see them. And and these were some early tulips that were out. I think there might be one. No, that's it. Okay. So if you haven't been to the Kaufman Memorial Gardens, make it a day. We went on a weekday, and it was pretty quiet. That's probably when I will go again. I, I'm still trying to avoid crowds, even with my mask on. Where Where's the Kaufman Gardens located? You know, I, I don't have, I should have looked it up. I don't have the address, but if you've been to the, to the uh, foundation building, it's just across the street from the foundation building. If you, if you drive the, whatever street it is that runs along uh, the creek, Bush Creek there, just on the south edge of, of, um, uh, oh, what's it called? The, where they the, hold the lighting every Thanksgiving. The plaza. The plaza, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I blacked out on that. But. East of that, uh, east of the north and south. Yeah, yeah. Southeast of the north. It's Hang just on. a couple of blocks east of there. Isn't it? It's north across 47th from uh, UMKC? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And a little yeah. bit east of the uh, of uh, uh, the art. Nelson. Nelson, thank you. Yeah. And but it's just tucked away in there, and, and you could drive right past it and not see it. It's on the north side of the street. It and is. And the are are big. Kaufman and Europe. Kaufman. They're buried. We visited there uh, when uh, uh, Bishop and uh, um, yeah. gosh, as many of us as, as could go in two or yeah. three uh, vans. Uh, that was one of our stops. So yeah, that's, that's good. Ten, that's good. Ten years ago. Yeah, that's when I was there too. There. Well, you it's, caught it just right, Robert. It's gorgeous. Well, like I say, I think June's going to be spectacular. Okay, looks like I'm up. <clears throat> uh, let me start off with a uh, challenging question. In your estimation, which state in the Union has the most lighthouses? Maine. Michigan. I hear, I hear Michigan. Maine. Michigan. I hear Michigan. Minnesota. And I hear Minnesota. Sorry, I was having fun with that. Actually, it is Michigan. Hey. There, are about, there are about 54, because remember, it has two sides of the state. Yeah. Actually, three, if you want to count. Hurons on the east and, and all, but anyway, uh, 
I was taken aback by that. And since I made a fool of myself, I would thought I'd give you an opportunity to guess also, because I thought Maine was the answer, but it's not. <clears throat> However, what I have for you is a conglomeration of both Maine and, uh, and Michigan. This one uh, has uh, is uh, Bass, Bass, yeah, Bass Bay out by, um, oh gosh, I should have my map on or with me. <clears throat> um, Midway, um, uh, down the coast. Um, let me think, let me, let me think. Ah, I should have studied this, Jonathan. Anyway, um, no, it is in Maine. Holy cow. Bass Bay is in Maine, uh, north of Portland, about 60 some miles. Um, what's the big state park that's there? Um, Oh, okay. Mark me down as unprepared, if you will, but it's my picture. And I had to get down in the, next to the, uh, to the uh, splashing waves to get this shot, but you may have had it in some calendars also. So. Um, it's lovely. Yeah. Beg pardon? It's lovely. That's his name. No, it's not. It's Bass Bay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's move on, Jonathan, before I ruin my day here, or your day. Um, just another, I liked it because the fence was there, um, and the clouds are white. There, it, everything's very pure about this, except the dark top, which gives you a nice touch. Um, it is in Michigan. But that's all I know. That's all I'm going to tell you, because that's all I remember. <clears throat> Let's move on, Jonathan. Here we go. I know you've seen this one on calendars. Um, this is uh, the Portland head. Why they call them heads, I'm not sure. Oh, there's a prescription. But it's just south of Portland. And I think it's the prettiest layout of, of any I've ever taken. Anybody else been there? If you go, uh, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. It's uh, just almost Wait, beyond that picture. Yeah. Betty Furtwängler was from Maine. And if Meryl, Betty Furtwängler, she was from Maine originally. You, you knew Betty and uh, Marilyn Reinhardt and Be and Betty visited Maine. Uh, Marilyn was really into the lighthouse for a while. Everybody was given her lighthouses. I think Maine has the most outstanding lighthouses, but they just don't have as many as Michigan has. Okay, Jonathan. This one is in Michigan on the Lake Michigan side. Um, I just like it because I thought it was very artistic. And a lot of them are red um, in, in Michigan. I don't know why. And, and anybody want to guess to why we have that, that, that tall string of lights? Why, why do they have to do that, I wonder? Because that's unusual that they're sticking way out into the lake. And they have this, uh, looks like it, you could walk out there on the top, but it doesn't have a lid. And I pose the question, but I have no answer. I think it might be because of this, like the snow. Is that one of the ones that gets totally covered in snow? Yeah, it's definitely could. Michigan, as we know, snows a lot. Yeah. That's about midway up the uh, Lake Michigan coast. Um, and I just did not take good notes as to and be able to apply them to the particular lighthouses, but um, they're well worth scooting up the coast just to see them. And uh, Lake Michigan side is more picturesque 
lighthouse is then on the other side, on the east side of the Lake Huron side. Uh, there are some, some nice ones uh, that I might have here also. <clears throat> okay, Jonathan. This one is about, uh, I don't know, about 10 miles down the coast. Uh, it's another red one, similar layout, um, but it's just a different feeling. And if you look really far into it, you can't, still can't see Wisconsin, but it's over there. Just in case you wanted to know where we are. It, the structure must support a train or a tram of some sort. No, I suspect the uh, this the snow idea is probably it because you know that's where the lights are up at the top. So they just raise the lights up above whatever the snowpack is. I think they're there permanent. So <laughs> when it does snow, you don't have. I any wonder if I wonder part of it is that that pier sticks out into the water. And it's to make it clear that the lighthouse is connected to the, the shore at on that location. Oh, that so that makes... nobody tries to come oh. around around the wrong side of the pier. Yeah, yeah. no pa no passage. That's the best answer, Jonathan. Why don't you speak up sooner? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very shy. I grew up in Michigan, so I'm very shy. Did you really? Oh. <laughs> yes, I did. I know you're lying, but one of those two statements was a lie, but <laughs> you grew up in Michigan. Okay. Flint, Flint, right? What? Flint, Jonathan. Yes. Flint. Yeah, I'm a Flint <clears throat> boy. That's kind of in the middle of the state, isn't it? It's it's more over on the closer to the Port Huron side, or to the uh, Huron Lake side, and it's uh, north of Detroit, but south of Saginaw Bay City, south of the Thumb. There for a while there, a few years ago, they were selling off old lighthouses in Michigan uh, for anybody who wanted to go in and make it into a home and maintain it. Uh, I thought about it, but uh, couldn't convince anybody else in the family. Yeah, uh, Kathy and I were, they didn't really make the offer, but had we pursued it, uh, we could have very easily up on the north tip, way up north. Um, where the Michigan joins with uh, what Huron, I guess it is, <clears throat> uh, or Superior, then Huron, um, that people could uh, lay out a, a three-month pattern and manage the lighthouse and, and stay there, make a vacation of it, which of course would be right. Um, and we thought about it, but we haven't <clears throat> done it, but it's still a fun idea. I think I do it in the summer, though. <laughs> do the lights still work, still still circle the the lights around the lighthouse? Uh, well, I don't know. You see, you can see two pillars on this one, or one pillar and one out there. Uh, the 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 Fresnel uh, lights that the uh, lighthouse uses is just amazing. To me, the depth of the glass and the distance it projects, it's, uh, it's fascinating. I think that's where the theater uh, got the idea of a Fresnel light, or it's the other way around. I'm not sure which, but, it, uh, but it's, it's fascinating. You know, they used to use uh, <clears throat> a fuel of some sort to keep the light, and now, so of course, it's all electrified. Uh, but it's still uh, it's still functional. Okay, let's do another one. This one is the most artistic looking because of the anchor, uh, and I'm not I can't tell you where that one is, but it is. It, I'm pretty sure it's still Michigan. Um, <clears throat> so I just like the flag and the anchor and the lighthouse and and the trees, and the blue sky. Am I won't buy it? No, never buy it, that's okay. Like the texture of the, the brick, the painted brick in the pier. <clears throat> yeah, the, the flakies on the, 
on the bottom half. Um, actually, if you look into that window midway up, you can see the reflection of the uh, um, stairwell. Okay, is that about it, Jonathan? Oh, there's one. That's another Michigan. Um, not outstanding, but I just, I like the composure and all the, uh, um, the combination of grass, sea, sand, bird droppings. It all helps make the picture. I've been up in the lighthouse. Um, and there are lots of steps. Lots of what? Lots of steps. They don't have any ele elevators. So to get up and maintain it, there are lots of steps. Yeah, it's, it's healthy if you're alive. OK. That's it. Corey, your turn. Time to make another trip. OK. <laughs> Okay, I'm up. So this is Amicalola Falls in Georgia. And it's a it's a 79 729 foot waterfall. And it's about 70 miles north of Atlanta. Um, it's actually in a town called Dawsonville, Georgia. And the Amicalola State Park is actually part of the Chattahoochee National Forest. Uh, it's 17 or 18 miles from the southernmost tip of the Appalachian Trail. So we decided one afternoon to head down there and you can either go down from the bottom and walk up, which is 600 and plus steps, or you can start at the top and walk down, which is 425 steps. <laughs> so you can take your pick. Either way, I, it's a little difficult. Going up is going up and let's face it. And then coming down, it, it's, uh, we were surprised how hard it was on the knees to go down that many steps. And then we had to keep going down the next 625 to get to the bottom. Um, we, you know, we thought that that would be the easy part, but it really wasn't. Um, but we had to make sure that we had a car at the bottom of the falls so that we didn't have to walk back up again. So my niece, bless her heart, she went down there, parked the car, and she walked up and met us. Oh my gosh. That's what we thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> so she walked up. So this is the third highest waterfall east of the Mississippi. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the, it is a, the Amicalola is a Cherokee word for tumbling waters. And it's beautiful. Georgia, the state of Georgia is beautiful with all the trees and the water. It, it's a gorgeous state. So if you haven't been there, there's lots to do and see. Was it a was it a noisy waterfall? It was somewhat loud, yes. When we actually got to the bottom, to the, 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 the lookout point where you could sit back and see the falls, yes, it was loud. Okay. And it actually, yeah, it was, yeah, it's just beautiful though. Okay, next, Jonathan. This is the beach, but this is actually, um, it's Indian Beach, which is between Atlantic Beach and Emerald Isle in North Carolina. Uh, many of you know Sheila Thompson who worked in the bookstore for many years. So okay. we, have, we have stayed at her condo in Salter Path, North Carolina, which is right on Indian Beach a few times. And we just love it. It's quiet, it's clean, and it's just a beautiful location. And since the condo faces the ocean, um, Dave, who gets up way earlier than I do, loves to sit out there with his coffee in the morning and just watch the water, you know, in the seagulls. And occasionally some dolphins will swim by and, you know, and then I get up and then we go for a walk on the beach. But again, it's clean. There's hardly any people there. Um, it's just a real peaceful place to go. And then just down the road from there, in North, it's the North Carolina Aquarium, where it's really close to Fort Macon, um, which was a fort built after the War of 1812, and it was active and through the Spanish-American War, and then became, uh, I guess, given to the state of North Carolina. And now there's a, a big, it's the fort's still there, but it's also part of a, a, quite a big park. 
And then in the area around there, there's just lots to, they have, the, the towns around there have lots to offer. You know, you can take boat tours to lighthouses. You can take um, ghost tours of some of the historic areas. And there's tons of historic areas in that part of the country. Um, great restaurants, lots of seafood. It's just a really nice, relaxing vacation spot. And we've gone at different times of the year and it doesn't seem to make any difference. It still seems to be pretty quiet and very few people on the beach. Did you drive there, Lori, or did you fly to Atlanta? We flew one time, we flew into Raleigh and rented a car. And then the other two times we've been, we drove. And it's about, it's a two day drive. Yeah, thank you. So, but we like to drive, so that, that, that's not a problem. Right. So, yeah, so in, either way. And it's quite, her prices are quite reasonable. I have to throw that in too. <laughs> yeah, it is. Have you been there too, Helen? No, that's one of the places I had on, you know, my list that I'd like to go to sometime, but no, yeah. I haven't been there yet. It's pretty good, pretty good one. All right, next. Now we have another waterfall and this one's very noisy. Um, I, I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota and Minnehaha Park and Minnehaha Falls is one of the places we went to as kids um, for family picnics just to play in the park. It's a massive park. It has shelters, picnic tables, trails. It has a bandstand that has different performances in it. There's a pavilion, you know, for snacks and drinks. There's all sorts of things there. And uh, our family quite often in the summer would meet at either, you know, Minnehaha or one of the other local lakes and have a picnic. And there's always, you know, places to swim and things to do. Um, it was just a great place to grow up in. And this is, a, this falls actually is a 50 foot, 53 foot waterfall, which doesn't compare to a lot of them in size, but it's just as beautiful. And it's flowing over limestone bluffs, which are part of Minnehaha Creek. And the creek is actually a tributary of the, the Mississippi River. And then just below the falls, there's a natural wading pool area that, um, you know, it's very shallow. Uh, lots of uh, kids and families hang out down there and, and uh, play in the water. And they make great snacks and picnic down there because it's level there. And then there's a trail that leads you back up to the main area. So it's a beautiful place. And again, Minnesota is another one of those places. It's absolutely beautiful. Whether you're a person that likes the summer or the winter, there's lakes everywhere. Um, you can get water sports, you can go camping, you can rent places, you know, rent uh, cabins on the lake. If you're a fisherman, you can fish till you're blue in the face, um, winter or summer. The, it, you know, you can go up there and ice fish and they'll drag the little house out on the lake for you and they'll dig, you know, drill you a hole and there you are. Um, so this is just, a, it's a beautiful place to go. There's so much to see and do in that state. Lori, yes? did, you, did you ever get a chance to walk across the Mississippi? On the bridges. <laughs> so many of the bridges in that area go across the Mississippi, so. Well, I meant, no, I meant. In the water? Truck. Yeah. No, can't have say you, that I recall have, doing that. Has anybody been to Bemidji? Bemidji? I have been to Bemidji. Bemidji. Long time ago. Way up north. Right. It's uh, the headwaters? They're the headwaters. Uh, the Mississippi starts in a lake, and I'm not sure, maybe 20 miles, let's say, west of Bemidji. Uh, and as the, as the overflow of that lake, that's the beginning of the Mississippi. So I was pleased to say that with the help of a few rocks, I was able to walk across the Mississippi. Oh, there you go. No, I can't say that I've ever done that. I've been on lots of lakes up there, but I haven't done them and walked across the river. <laughs> it's my long legs. Oh, that's it, Dick. That's, that's definitely it. So I think that was the, only, the three I had. Yep. Oh, well, one. This one, this is, uh, we took a, a trip in September 2019 and went out to out west. But our first stop, we I, don't, I only drive so far each day, you know, six to eight hours at the most. And um, so we went as far as Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And this is Falls Park. And it's just a beautiful uh, park with cascading waterfalls. Uh, I almost threw in some audio 
so you could hear what it sounded like, but I decided to save that for another day, another time. And then they have a kind of an observation. They have a visitor center, an observation deck, and this gives you kind of a, an overview of it. So you can see Sioux Falls in the background. You can see the old mill on the left-hand side there and uh, uh, walking paths throughout the, the place and the, uh, the, the mm. waterfalls. So it's, it's quite a beautiful park. What I really enjoyed about it also is that you could walk uh, from here downtown, which was not that far, or drive just a short distance, and they have an annual sculpture uh, exhibit in Sioux Falls. Um, and I can't remember now, at least 40, 50 different sculptures that uh, some are permanent, some vary each year. So it's a, there's a lot to do there. Kept us busy for, for the time we were in Sioux Falls before we headed out further further west. And as we headed further west, uh, it was about 50 some years ago, we headed out and stopped at this corn palace. And at that time, being uh, married just for a year uh, or two, um, we, uh, we were fascinated by the corn palace. And I kept thinking, I don't know if I want to stop, but we got closer and closer to it. And finally, we both turned to each other and said, we got to stop and see what's changed. And when you go inside, they have exhibits. And each year, the Corn Palace changes the, the exhibits, both inside and out. Um, and it's, um, uh, they have pictures of the previous year's exhibits. And all, all the, uh, clearly, all the pictures on the outside, the murals are, are made with corn products. So... It was kind of a, a fun, fun little stopover. And then I, I've shown this once before. I don't know how many of you have seen it, but this is that Benson Sculpture Garden that's in Loveland. And I, I was curious. So I looked up to see there are 172 sculptures. And the, uh, there's a high school. And then you have this literally like a long park that the students can walk through on their way home or if they, if they go that way. But it's, it's open to anybody, uh, wide open, as, as I think Dick mentioned earlier. And they've got, a, they've got a north pond, they've got a middle pond, and then a south pond, and then they've got another uh, north lake duck pond. And they're all strung together with the sculptures, 172 of them, covering the whole thing. And they go on either side of uh, 29th Street. We did one side of 29th Street. We never made it to the other side. There were so many sculptures there. So this just gives you a little taste of it. earlier, you can literally go online and do a, um, um, a search for Benson Sculpture Gardens at Loveland, and they will show you a map of where all the 172 are located. They'll give you pictures of all of them and the titles. Uh, it's just a, a delightful place to stop and spend uh, as much time as you want. So, Are they adding more, Jonathan? No, well, that's a good question. I really don't know. It's, it's pretty complete as it is. I'm, um, I'm not sure they have much space to add more, <laughs> but, but so anything's did possible. Have, did you have a sense that the sculptures that are there, they had some kind of a contest to bring them in or were they do donated and dedicated to somebody? 
Do you have any well, it's put together by a, uh, the Art Council, and so I'm assuming it's, uh, I, I don't know the history of it. It could be that it's a multi-year kind of project, but it's, I didn't worry about that part. I just enjoyed walking among all the, <laughs> all the sculptures. Uh, Yellen, that's your assignment. That's my assignment? No, that's Helen's assignment. Oh, okay. To go to Loveland? Well, no, <laughs> no. To answer your, no, to answer your question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll find questions? out, I'll find out, because I'm curious and I want to go there. Okay. It really is beautiful, Marilyn. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It's amazing. I can't believe they have... And one of the sculptures, I can't think of who the artist is, but but it's the same sculptor that did the block sculptor down on the plaza. So it's pretty cool. Well, the, the variety of style styles is just amazing. And I'm I guess I'm a sucker for sculptures. I just love sculptures. And that's the the best, most comprehensive collection I've ever seen. And I've haven't seen the whole thing there either. I mean, I, I can it, go back and spend a couple more days. It also looked like a real mix of ethnicities, a lot of yes. Native Americans. Yeah, and and contemporary and traditional. I mean, it was really nice. Marilyn, that, are, you, are you talking about the cancer? That yes, the, yes. So that Tom um, Corbin that did that. Okay, so one of his pieces, it looks like, is the same piece that's in that garden. Yeah, he also did Kaufman there. The, he did the sculptures in Kaufman Gardens. Yeah. And he did the Kaufmans out at Kaufman Stadium. Oh, yeah. A uh, quick check on their website shows uh, they're having what they're calling a pavilion party, uh, 6th, 7th, and 8th of August. I'm guessing it's a fundraiser. The tickets are $75 a piece. See you all there. Okay. It, it looks but you know what's interesting is Loveland really was just a, a drive through for us. We were headed on our way out to Rocky Mountain National Park from, um, from Hill City and up around Custer. And so we, uh, I, I, I found some places to stop along the way. And so we planned on stopping for just a couple hours and probably did that much or more just wandering around one one part of the, the garden. So did you was, even know it was there before you stopped? I I knew it was there. I didn't know how extensive it was. We I had used uh, I think it was called Road Trippers, a little app that uh, helps you identify places that you might want to stop along a, a certain path, a certain trail. And so uh, I knew it was there. I just didn't know how phenomenal it would be. It's right in the, pretty much the middle of suburbia there. Uh, Kathy okay. and I stumbled on it uh, going from one, from uh, Estes Park, I think it was, uh, back down toward uh, um, Denver and just stumbled on it and took probably two or three hours stumbling around. It's beautiful, just, you can't, you can't leave. And the other, um... There are two other places we found sculptures that I really enjoy. One is uh, that uh, fall, uh, uh, Sioux Falls, uh, because their downtown exhibit, again, many of our permanent, some, some rotate each year. They've got a fantastic uh, series of uh, sculptures up and down the downtown streets and all. And the other place that I know Helen and others have been to is uh, uh, Crystal, what is it, Crystal Gardens, Crystal Palace? <laughs> Crystal Bridges? Bridges. Bridges. Oh, Bridges. Bridges. oh yeah. Eventually, they've got uh, some fantastic outdoor sculptures down there. And my okay. wife and I just like walking. And so each of those places has been great for walking and just enjoying the, uh, the view. Have you stood under the spider? Yes. 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 Yeah. Crystal Bridges. <laughs> so if any of you need uh, lawn decorations, I just looked it up. Uh, there's a sculpture called Child of Light. It's a bargain at 27,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need, a little yard art. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think you can get some cheaper than that if you yeah that, if, I, if you inflate them during the holidays. You can get. I, I picked the highest price one. There's one for twenty six hundred. <laughs> Well, I'll put that on my my Christmas list for next year. Well, if we all chip in, the twenty six hundred would work. So, Dick, I think I'm not sure, but were you? Did you say the one, um, the red um, lighthouse? I think it may have been the at St. Joseph. Is that? Were you down by St. Joseph? Michigan? Remind me. Re remind me of where that is. I don't know. It's 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 on the um, south. Uh, southeastern side of the state. Over by Detroit? No, it's on the it's on the opposite out. side. It's um, it um, because didn't you say this is Lake Michigan? Yeah. Yeah, so it would be the south southeastern side of the state by Chicago. Southwest. Or southwest, sorry. I get my Thank you. No wonder he's no wonder he's confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure that out. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I turned my map upside down already. No, I'm questions. sorry. I do that a lot. <laughs> uh, but it, I'm not sure. It could have been. That could have been because right. because I have I have stayed there before with my family, and I have seen pictures of that bridge covered. I mean, all the way to the top with ice and snow. I mean, it's really probably ice because of the, you know, the wind and all of that. So I really think that that's part of it too, because it's amazing. Well, we, we made the trip about eight, 10 years ago and um, I, we've packed up stuff to move. And uh -huh. so I didn't get a chance to go back through and, and label each one of them. So let's assume it, that you're right. And that's what it was. Well, that's a fun place to go and visit too. Um, St. Joseph, um, Michigan is really a fun little town to stay. So my family has gone there a lot because we have, well, most of them live in Illinois. So we just kind of go, you know, to that area. And I have a brother in Michigan that lives in Michigan. So Joseph is close to Holland, Michigan, too, with all the tulips and the windmill. Yeah. Yeah. One, or, yeah, one or two of those of, of the uh, lighthouses that I had were they're at Holland. I can't remember. What are the red ones, I think? Well, there's also, a, I, I know up at Lettington and Traverse City, yep. uh, there are uh, lighthouses that are quite beautiful too. And of course, up on the Lake Superior, there are a number of them also. If you just go up the Lake Michigan coast, you'll see a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, I saw, I went to um, Cape May, New Jersey, and I, I well, um, Cape Cod, even. I mean, it's just love lighthouses. I can't remember the last one we were in, but it, uh, I, I just can't think of where it was, but it, it was gorgeous. I mean, they, they have preserved the old uh, oil lamp up top. It was non functioning. It was, you know, but you, it was a tourist attraction, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we walked up the stairs. It takes a little bit of energy to get up there, but uh, it's quite, <laughs> quite beautiful. That's fun. Wow. The comments or questions? This was a great presentation. Yeah. It was great. great yeah. Job, everybody. Yeah, thank you.